This conference will now be recorded. With that, I want to welcome Dr. Higgins and I want to turn the floor over to her. She is, as I mentioned, a chiropractic doctor here in Toronto that does a whole lot more than chiropractic and has been so successful um, at reversing lifestyle diseases naturally. So over to you, Dr. Paulette Higgins, and welcome and thank you for being here. Well, thank you so much, Carolyn, for the invitation. It's an honor to be with all of y'all today. And uh, we're just gonna jump right in. I want to welcome you to the webinar entitled From Belly Fat to Belly Flat, Part mm -hmm. One. And I'm just going to take off my screen and cut down on feedback here because you need to hear me, not necessarily see me. Now, no doubt if you're here today, either you or someone you know has an interest in leaning out a bit, am I right? I wanna congratulate you on making your health a priority today. Now I've been doing weight loss for over 35 years and over the years, I found that people who wanted to lose weight really wanted a weight loss solution that also in, uh, improved their health, am I right? And another thing that I've discovered is that there are a host of myths and misconceptions out there regarding weight loss and calories and carbohydrates, et cetera, et cetera. But there's one thing that I really want to straighten out for you today, and that's this. Many people think that in order to become healthy, they must lose some weight. In order to become healthy, one must lose weight. If I lose the weight, they think I'll be healthier, I'll have more energy, my heart will be stronger, my joints will feel better. And yeah, while that is true, the greater reality is this. In order to lose the weight, one must become healthy. In order to lose the weight, you must become healthy, the body has got to be able to function at a certain optimal level for you to be able to effectively and responsibly shed the pounds. And the truth of this statement can be seen in gyms everywhere where people are honestly putting in their exercise time, yet no matter how hard, how hard they trained or how little they ate, they couldn't lose the weight or especially that stubborn belly fat and definitely not to the point expected for the effort that they put in. The question that begs an answer then is this, how could people be working out three, four, five days a week and practically starving themselves and not lose a pound? Well, we're gonna answer that question in a few minutes, but the point I really want to get to right now is this, in order for you to lose the weight, you must become healthy. So our goal today is to ensure that you understand how to do this in an effective, healthy, and responsible manner. Now, this webinar is entitled From Belly Fat to Belly Flat Part One. And I'm specific in my title because this is not just a webinar focused on losing weight. It's a webinar about reducing and getting rid of belly fat. Now, there are two types of fat. Does anybody know where they are? Now, feel free to just type in the chat. You can talk to me the whole way through, all right? There are two types of belly fat, two main types. One is the subcutaneous fat. Subcutaneous fat, this is the fat that sits right under the skin and can be pinched with your fingers. And it's typically not a really big concern. But then there's also the visceral fat. Mm. The visceral fat lies deep within the abdominal walls and surrounds the organs. Now this is a huge concern because visceral fat, AKA toxic fat, is the dangerous fat stored close to many of our vital organs such as the pancreas, the liver, the intestines, and around our major vessels that come off of the heart. Visceral belly fat is associated with dangerous health consequences. It raises your blood pressure. It leads to strokes. It contributes to heart disease. It can negatively alter the good and bad cholesterol levels. It impairs the body's ability to use insulin. 
so that people become insulin resistant, leading to type 2 diabetes. Visceral fat is a significant contributor to breast and colorectal cancer, Alzheimer's disease, and lower back pain and dysfunction. So while many people hate that dimply subcutaneous fat, it is the visceral belly fat that can wreak havoc on your health and ruin your life. Now, this is why I'm spending time on this because I want you to think deeper and think about your health and your future. You see, a lot of people care about their weight, particularly belly fat when it's time to go on vacation or attend that wedding, get ready for New Year's. And I'm trying to inspire you to get serious about getting rid of belly fat before you've been diagnosed with the disease, before you've had a stroke, or before you need that back surgery. So ladies, if you measure around your waist, right around the belly button area, and your waist is 35 inches or greater, or men, if your waist is 40 inches or greater, you're likely storing that visceral toxic fat. And if you're struggling with any lifestyle disease, no worries, let's get out in front of it. Let's work on improving it, even reversing it like so many of our patients have done. And one of the ways to do that is to reduce belly fat. So today as promised, I'm gonna teach you the five must knows for reversing belly fat. And in the process, I'm gonna teach you, uh, uh, like I'm gonna give you tips on how to improve and begin the process of reversing diabetes, high blood pressure and cholesterol. All right, you ready? Number one, you must know, here are your five must knows. You must know, number one, how to de-stress your body to keep it in the fat burning state. You must know how to detox your number one fat burning organ. You must know how to make your pancreas work for you and not against you. You must know the foods that prevent you from burning fat, even the so-called healthy foods. And you must know the foods that accelerate fat burning in your body. All right, so let's begin with a question. What would you say is one of the biggest contributors to visceral belly fat? You can type this in the chat. What would you say? Would you say it's A, sugar? Would you say it's B, saturated fat, like meats, chicken, beef, oxtail? Would you say it's C, stress? Or would you say it's D, eating late? What would you think is one of the biggest contributors to visceral belly fat? And the answer is stress. Now, does anybody here have a busy, stressful life? Hmm. Many people don't understand how stress plays on one of the most important systems of our bodies, and that's called our autonomic nervous system. Where are you, wherever you are, just say autonomic. It's part of the overall nervous system that runs your body, but this system runs all the stuff that you don't have to think about your organs, your glands, and your blood vessels. So you don't have to lay down at night, praise God, and remind your heart to keep beating or your lungs to keep breathing, your stomach to keep digesting. It's automatic or autonomic. Now within the autonomic nervous system, there are two main branches, two sisters, if you will, called your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system. And we're gonna call our sympathetic nervous system, we're just gonna call her Martha. See, Martha won't sit down. She's busy, busy, busy. This system is concerned with taking in everything you need to get through the stressful day. She's busy speeding up your heart rate. She speeds up your breathing. She raises your blood pressure, increases your focus, steps up everything necessary to get through the high demands of work, spouse, exam, traffic, kids, life. This is also the system known as your fight or flight stress response system. If you perceive danger, whether real or imagined, sympathetic Martha will kick in and give you a surge of power to fight and protect yourself or take flight and run from danger. Your sympathetic Martha gets you to go, go, go. You with me? The opposite of the sympathetic system is called your parasympathetic system. Write that down, parasympathetic. We're gonna call the parasympathetic system Mary. Parasympathetic Mary is concerned with getting you to calm down, back to a state of peace. This is the system known as your rest and digest system. 
Parasympathetic Mary wants to recuperate, allow the body to heal itself. So after the long stressful day of work or any stressful period in your life requiring your sympathetic Martha to be in high gear, you now want your parasympathetic Mary to kick in so that yeah. your body can relax and be restored. Now it's important to recognize that only one system, one sister will be dominant at a time. Either stressed out sympathetic Martha who's on the go, 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 either she'll be in charge or restful, recuperating parasympathetic Mary will be. Now, unfortunately, in our current high stress, high pressured culture, the sympathetic Martha system is activated so often that the body does not have a chance to kick in parasympathetic Mary, allowing you to heal and repair, which means the body stays in the high stress mode and over time can be a killer on your health and on your weight loss efforts. Now here's why. In times of stress, your sympathetic system will call to action your stress fighting glands called your adrenal glands. Write that down, your adrenal glands. There's one located on top of each kidney. And one of the main functions of the adrenal glands is to counteract the effects of stress by producing a hormone called cortisol. Write that down, adrenals produce cortisol. And cortisol has been coined the stress hormone. For its purpose is to allow us to handle stress. Any and all perceived stress kicks the adrenals into action, forcing them to start pumping out cortisol. The problem comes into play when stress has been going on too long and the body is forced to continually produce, 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 produce cortisol. Excess cortisol in the blood increases blood sugar and stores it as visceral belly fat right around the organs. And the more stress you're under, the more cortisol is produced and then the bigger that belly gets. Furthermore, high levels of cortisol not only increase belly fat, but they elevate your blood sugar, elevate your blood pressure, they slow your metabolism, they cause, it causes muscle loss, and it will dramatically affect your sleep. In times of stress, your sympathetic system should release the cortisol to get you through it, and then your parasympathetic system should kick in and allow your body to recuperate. Now, here's what you need to know. It is in the parasympathetic state that fat is burned, muscles grow, blood pressure and blood sugar is lowered, and proper digestion and elimination can occur. The parasympathetic Mary state is your fat burning state. The sympathetic Martha state is your fat storing state. So in order to lose that belly fat, you must know, number one, how to de-stress your body <clears throat> And to keep you in the fat burning state. Now, how do we do that? Number one, start and end each day in the parasympathetic Mary state. Get up in the morning, read something positive, read your Bible, meditate, pray. Do not get up in the morning and hit the ground running with all the responsibilities that you have with the spouse and kids and bills and life and work. Immediately puts you in the sympathetic spikes that cortisol and other stress hormones and keeps you there all day. Start your morning parasympathetic, read, pray, you know, slow down for the first 30 minutes, then go about your day. When you come back at the end of the day, flip out from the sympathetic back into the parasympathetic again, all right? And again, read something positive, pray, meditate, read your Bible, slow your brain down. This has been proven on brain scans to, to switch you from the sympathetic state into the parasympathetic. Number two, deep breathing. Deep diaphragmatic breathing will also put you from the sympathetic into the parasympathetic, also proven on brain scans. And additionally, number three, get your spine and your back checked for misalignments that can cause you pain and create inflammation. See your Cairo. I'm going to give you an opportunity to get checked later today. But what you have to remember is that the autonomic nervous system, it runs through your spine. If you're feeling neck or back pain for more than two weeks or hip or knee pain, you've got a lot of stress 
in your nervous system and you're in that sympathetic state and you're spiking that cortisol and you need to get that fixed up. Creates tons of inflammation, leads to a host of disease. And finally, you want to get seven to nine hours of sleep. All right. So you with me so far? I hope I just hear you virtual. Yes. All right. So the first thing we just covered is how to de-stress the body to keep it in the fat burning state. Now, here's the key. Now, if you're trying to lose weight, you can't let people stress you out. Can I get an amen? All right. Moving on. What is your super duper fat burning organ? What would you think? Is it A, your thyroid? B, your skin, C, your lungs, or D, your liver? What would you think? It is your liver. We often don't think about liver health in terms of weight loss, but the liver is responsible for doing two very important things. Number one, it's the liver that breaks down fats. And number two, it filters out and removes harmful toxins from the body medications, pesticides, herbicides in our foods, the alcohol, caffeine. The job of the liver is to get the toxins out of the blood and get it over to the gut so it can be excreted, <clears throat> sorry, excreted from the body. Because of our lifestyles, most people struggle with overburdened livers. Now, if your liver is overburdened or overworked, two detrimental things can happen. Number one, it won't efficiently break down fat. And number two, it can get clogged up and the fat and toxins that have been pumped into the colon to be excreted by the body can now recirculate back to the liver and get and clog it back up. Now, if it remains clogged up with excessive waste, it won't be able to remove fat circulating in the bloodstream. Then the fat can build up on the walls of the blood vessels, which can lead to high cholesterol and atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, fatty liver, and visceral belly fat. The liver's role is crucial for efficient circulation, lowering cholesterol and breaking down fat. So in order to lose weight and improve your health, you must know how to detox your number one fat burning organ. Here are three things that you can do to improve your liver health right away. Number one, eliminate processed foods. Get rid of everything that comes in a box, frozen meals, pizzas, microwave dinners, mac and cheese. They're chock full of chemicals and preservatives and toxins. The more foreign substances you ingest, the more your liver is burdened. Number two, do a gentle liver cleanse every morning. Squeeze a half a lemon into hot or lukewarm water, like a glass of water first thing in the morning, and drink it prior to breakfast. Number three. Adopt a plant-based diet. I can hear Carolyn screaming, amen, in the back there. Too much meat and saturated fats burden the liver and stores more fat. All right, so number two, you want to detox your number one fat-burning organ every day. Keep your liver clean. Now, question, true or false? Only diabetics need to be concerned about insulin. Would you say that's true or false? What do you think? Only diabetics need to be concerned about insulin. That is absolutely false. So next, you must know how to make your pancreas work for you and not against you. Now, anybody trying to lose weight needs to get a handle on their hormones, particularly insulin and glucagon. Now I'm gonna be speaking on From Belly Fat to Belly Flat part two next week. And this is where I'm gonna be talking a lot about hormones. What you need to know is that hormones derive weight loss. If you haven't already like uh, registered, make sure you're looking out for Carolyn's emails because it's important that you get on the line next week for part two. Now to help you understand how the body works, I want you to think of life back in the day. Let's pretend you are at the age of 10. And you're very active in the sport, cricket or basketball or hide and go seek, whatever you used to play. Now here's how the body works. When food, particularly carbohydrates are eaten, blood sugar rises. Now when blood sugar goes up, the pancreas secretes a hormone called insulin. Now one of the main jobs of insulin is to escort sugar from the bloodstream and into the muscle cells where it can be used for energy throughout the day. 
So remember now, you're a 10 year old child who has not messed up your system yet. So when you, the child, eats your meal, blood sugar rises. When blood sugar rises, the pancreas secretes the hormone called insulin. And insulin's job is to carry that blood sugar to the muscle so it can be used for energy throughout the day. The muscle accepts the sugar. The kid goes out and plays cricket or baseball. The sugar is burned out. All is well. We have a very efficient system here. Now, let's fast forward 30, 40 years. Now we're no longer playing outside every day. Now we're sitting behind a desk for eight to 10 hours a day, very little exercise, right? And then after work, we go home, we eat a big old dinner, and then we plop down on the couch for a few hours after that, watching TV until it's, we finally make it upstairs and go to bed. Now, when we eat a meal, blood sugar goes up. When blood sugar goes up, the pancreas secretes the hormone called what? Insulin, and insulin tries to escort that sugar to the muscle to be used for energy throughout the day. Only now the muscle rejects the insulin's attempt to give it sugar. Why? Because if you have an inactive lifestyle and there is no demand from the muscle cells to have any more sugar, the muscle cells eventually become resistant to the effects of insulin. And instead of the muscle accepting the sugar that the insulin brings to it, it says, no, uh, -uh -mm. no, thank you, I am full. There's no reason to accept any more sugar. This person sits at a desk all day, then goes home and lounges on a couch all night and leads a sedentary lifestyle, an exercise-free lifestyle. I have no use for this sugar. Take it somewhere else. And the body says, fine, I'll take it to the fat cells and dumps all that sugar in the fat cells. Then the person eats again and insulin takes that glucose to the muscle and the muscle says no, and insulin says okay, and boom, dumps all that sugar again into the fat cells. And this cycle goes on meal after meal, snack after snack for years, and the person gains more and more weight. And what's worse is if the sedentary lifestyle continues then even the fat cells become resistant, now sugar has nowhere to go and it will rise and rise and rise in the bloodstream. Now, blood sugar is continually elevated beyond the ability of insulin to remove it. The person then becomes what? Diabetic. So how do we make our pancreas work for us and not against us? Well, number one, you must know that sugar is your number one energy. Sorry, <laughs> sugar, yes, it gives you energy, but sugar is your number one enemy. You must know the foods that produce sugar in the blood and cut way back. So let's go through some examples. Got to cut back on the breads and a lot of pasta and chips and a whole lot of rice and peas and those sugary sodas and drinks. All right. Cut back on the sugar. Sugar is your number one enemy. Number two, you want to make glucagon your friend. Glucagon is another hormone secreted by the pancreas. It performs the exact opposite function of insulin. Insulin stores fat, glucagon melts fat. Insulin is stimulated by carbs. Glucagon is stimulated by protein. Only one is dominant. So to make your pancreas work for you, you must take in adequate amounts of quality digestible proteins, all right? When we eat adequate amounts of digestible proteins, the hormone glucagon is produced and glucagon tells the body to release stored fat to be used for your fuel and your energy throughout the day. Now, again, you want to implement high quality proteins that won't put burden on your kidneys or liver, right? So high amounts of meat and animal flesh burdens both the liver and the kidneys and causes digestive issues and can contribute to visceral fat. So the bulk of your proteins and protein shakes, sorry, all, I, for all of your proteins and protein shakes, how about that, Carolyn, should be plant-based, all right? And three, you should exercise. A combination of healthy eating, reducing stress in your nervous system, and a consistent solid workout program is the key to managing your insulin and sugar levels and getting rid of that visceral fat. Do exercises that build 
or maintain your muscles. Walking isn't enough. The more muscle tissue you have, the better you can regulate your blood sugar and insulin, especially if you're diabetic, because exercise will continually create new muscle cells and therefore a place for insulin to bring the sugar after we eat. So in terms of your exercise program, all right, clear it with your doctor first, but you, you know, typically you want to do about five days of cardio for at least 30 minutes and three days of strength training. All right. And at next week's webinar, I'm going to simplify how to implement a proper training program, um, whether you're at home or wherever you are, and teach how to implement it into your life. All right. Furthermore, exercise helps to prevent and even helps to reverse lifestyle diseases such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease. Now, what's the leading cause of death in Canada? It's heart disease. How about the U.S.? It's heart disease, a very preventable disease, all right? And finally, you must know the foods that prevent you from burning fat, even the so-called healthy foods and the foods that accelerate fat burning in your body. So what are the foods that prevent you from burning fat? Number one, wheat, very unfriendly to the digestive tract, contains gluten, which is not digested easily. It spikes insulin and stores belly fat. So alternatives to wheat. Replace your wheat with like quinoa, millet, or sweet potato. Get rid of the cow's milk. Replace it with rice, almond, or another nut milk. Get rid of the caffeine. The body treats caffeine as a toxin, and we need to eliminate toxins from our diet to give our liver a chance to cleanse the system and burn stored fats effectively. So you want to replace your coffees and your caffeines with like herbal teas, lemon, ginger, peppermint. Uh, number four, get rid of the alcohol. Replace your alcohol, which is full of sugars, replace it with water. And finally, remember that bad fats make you fat, but good fats help you burn fat. So what are the bad fats? Things like trans fats, anything containing hydrogenated oil. So basically, you want to get rid of the fried foods, the French fries, the fried chicken, the donuts, the Escovitch, fried foods, and the junk food. And replace it with good fats olive oil, raw nuts and seeds, your almonds, almonds, pecans. You want to add some avocado to your life, some walnut oil, some essential fatty acids and omegas like, uh, like black seed or chia seeds, all right, your legumes. In addition, add the foods that accelerate fat burning in your body. So you must add phytonutrient power. Now, what are your phytonutrients? Those are plant foods that contain thousands of natural chemicals that will heal your body and accelerate fat burning. So what you want to do every single day is eat the rainbow. So what can we add? Berries, berries include berries, strawberry, raspberries, like berries are a powerful just a powerhouse of nutrition packed with vitamins and minerals and some of the best sources of antioxidants of any food. Add cruciferous vegetables to your life, your broccoli, cauliflower, your Brussels sprouts, kale, bok choy. Yeah, and what I really recommend is that you get in every color every day. Now, are you still with me? Let's review how you go from visceral belly fat to belly flat. Follow the five must knows. Number one, de-stress your body and keep yourself in the fat burning state. So what do I mean? If emotional stress and physical stress will cause cortisol to spike. Stay in the parasympathetic. Start your morning and end your day parasympathetic. Read, pray, meditate, uh, deep breathing. Get adjusted, get your nervous system straightened out and make sure if you have pain syndrome, you are working to reverse your pain syndromes, and remember to get seven to nine hours of quality sleep every night, right? Number two, you want to detox your number one fat burning organ. So you eliminate the processed foods and do a gentle liver cleanse with warm water every day and adopt a plant-based diet. You also want to do some exercises, right? You want to do exercises that help to uh, manage your insulin and your glucagon. Next, pull up the next one for me. All right, so you want to know how to make your pancreas work for you and not against you, right? So remember that sugar is your number one enemy. You want to have quality 
um, proteins and make your exercises, you know, like not only cardio, but strength training. Next one. And we want, we just went through the foods that prevent you from burning fat, right? So what did we talk about? We talked about getting rid of things like wheat, get rid of the cow's milk, get rid of the caffeine and the alcohol. And remember, bad fats make you fat, but good fats help you burn fat. So add the nuts, the olive oil, the legumes, the avocados, all your berries and phytonutrients, all right? And that, people of God, is how you go from belly fat to belly flat, right? So I hope you learned something. If you learned something, just say yes. I can virtually hear a yes. Here's my gift to you. And if you're serious about really understanding what's going on with your health, like the true status of your health today, I invite you to take our very sophisticated full body scan, which is a clinical test where we can uh, test you on internally and on a cellular level to check how all the systems of the body of your body, how we're doing. Uh, we heavily test your cardiovascular system. Are you at risk for high blood pressure? If you have it, what specifically is causing it? So we can teach you how to improve it or reverse it. We check your pancreas. Are you at risk for diabetes? Are you insulin resistant? Are you gaining fat because of insulin? If you have diabetes, are your meds managing you? What stage are you in? How can we help you improve or reverse it? We check your digestion, your minerals, your body fat, your lean mass. We check to see what is actually storing belly fat. We talked about a couple of hormones today, glucagon and insulin, but we check leptin, we check uh, we, we'll check cortisol, your adrenaline, your epinephrine, to name a few. Uh, we'll check your risk for cancer, and we'll check your autonomic and your central nervous system and a host of other things. And then we'll go over the results with you, and at the end of the results, you will have a very comprehensive understanding of what's going on with your health today and what it's going to take to fix it. Now, we've discounted our very sophisticated scan from $200 to $75. So if you're interested in that, you just send me a text tonight and we will get you on the schedule. It is covered by insurance. However, if you have a pacemaker or you're pregnant, you cannot take the test. Now, if you're interested in that, just send me over a text and uh, you can text to 647-430-7748. That's 647-430-7748. And you just text scan and put your name on it and tomorrow my staff will give you a call and we'll get you on the schedule all right so just to say for those listening 647-430-7748 you can call us leave a message there or you can just send me a text that says yes i want the scan and uh just give me your name if you know someone that could really benefit from it but they're not on the line to us with us tonight just pass on this information we'll happy to uh to honor that commitment for you guys. All right, I hope you guys learned something. Let me come back on. Hi, Carolyn. I'm gonna yield back to you. Thank you so much for sharing. That was so awesome. That was really fantastic. I know that uh, I learned some things and I trust other people did as well. Um, this was fantastic information where I appreciate the offer that you've also offered to our clients. Um, folks, there are some, um, there are definitely some other things that we can do um, to help just to build on what Dr. Higgins is saying because uh, it's very real. And uh, I've met a lot of people that are like thin and bill, but they've got belly fat. And the first thing I ask them is, uh, are you stressed out? Who has your stress level at? <laughs> so that's really real. So. Um, I don't want to take up too much more time tonight. Uh, you pretty much said it all, but I just want to share a couple things just to build on what you're talking about um, sure. that would make sense and also help make it more practical um, is that a couple things that are important is, as Dr. Higgins said, you're not just trying to uh, go on a diet. You're trying to build a healthy lifestyle habit. This is like the way that you live most all of the time. Your off days are, are so few and far between. They're like less than 10% of your life. But most of the time you want to make eating um, in a healthy way your lifestyle. And, and why would you want to do that? Maybe you feel like you're going to be deprived. Um, but 
for sure, uh, once you start eating this way, you will notice that you feel so nourished. You feel so full of energy that you wouldn't want to change. So I just want to point a couple of things is that, and Dr. Higgins touched on it, getting that liver detoxified is so huge. It is amazing. And Dr. Higgins, I am sure that you have also noticed that there's a huge rise in people that have fatty livers from oh. non, like non-alcoholic fatty livers. Oh Why do we have so much fat building up on the liver? This has happened in the people that, you know, they're in their 30s, they're in their 40s. This is not like an old age disease from these alcoholics anymore. That's the only reason why anybody knew we have a fatty liver. It is lifestyle. It's a sedentary lifestyle of having way too much saturated fat, but also high stress. Because your body, when you're stressed out, produces extra cortisol to buffer, it produces extra cholesterol to buffer your cells from all this cortisol release. So we end up with too much fat in our body that we even produce ourselves, plus we eat the fat. So if you could go on uh, a juice fast, of course, it's available at the Energy Shack or you juice yourself, but depending, of course, speak to your doctor um, or your health practitioner. But if you're not on a lot of medication, it's a really good idea to just give your body a break of digestion. And you could do a juice fast for like two days, three days. Understand that one day of fasting, you're only in storage mode. So you're actually not burning any fat. So you definitely want to push past that one day so that you can create a really low caloric deficit. Because once you can create a, a caloric deficit for past 24 hours, your body then on day two starts burning fat to keep you alive. And it's gonna to go to the liver, it's gonna to go to your fat cells, it's gonna to go to your tummy, and it's gonna start releasing that fat, releasing the toxins. So maybe it doesn't feel so good, um, but that's a great way to do it. You may just wanna go on just a raw food fast. So, you know, just either fruit meal or salad meal for a couple days, three days, or even a week. You know, give your body a break from all this cooked food, from all these starches. It's just a nice way to cleanse the system and allow your body to go through a caloric deficit so that past that 24 hour time, you start burning some fat because that's important. You also want to make sure that your raw portion before you eat your cooked meal um, is bigger. So you want to have that big salad and then your cooked meal. You want to have that big bowl of fruits before your, before your breakfast item. So as Dr. Higgins says, you can get in that rainbow of colors, which is so important. Avoid the snacking. That interruption of digestion puts so much stress on the body and stress is equivalent, of course, to that outpouring of cortisol. So even if it looks like it's a healthy snack, stop interrupting digestion. Believe it or not, but if you're not hungry and you just even put a healthy almond in your system, you create digestive trouble in your stomach gut. And guess what your body does to protect that digestion stress factor in your stomach? It starts to build fat to protect your stomach organs from all of this damage. So avoiding snacking is also important. And um, I also want to, um, I'm just gonna stop sharing for a minute. I will also give, part two of this nutrition talk, when we come back next week, I want to address a few questions because we have a few minutes left um, that I feel there's not a lot of questions because I think Dr. Hickens covered most of it, but there are definitely some questions in here that I think we can answer. So um, Connie had asked, what about a shower first thing in the morning? And I'll give my thoughts on it. Dr. Hickens, you can give yours as well if you have any thoughts about that. So a shower first thing in the morning is totally fine. However, as I've mentioned before, if you've been to any of my seminars, taking these hot, hot showers um, in the morning can create an inflammatory response. But if you can do a cool shower or at least do hot, then cold, then hot, then cold, you actually get the blood running through, dilating and constricting, dilating, constricting. And through that, through that dilation, you can actually release toxins that will come out through the pores. So a shower first thing in the morning is fine and it's okay to soap up in some warm water, but to sit there in a hot shower for 10 minutes can actually have negative impacts on your body. Anything to add to that, Dr. Higgins? No, that's good. And um, uh, Jacintha, my sweet friend, 
from, I believe, Michigan, if I keep if I get your state right, is asking if the scan is only available to people in Canada. And yes, you got to be close. But Dr. Higgins services, if you need her for um, she can speak to you, she can help you, um, you can still get in touch. And she can somehow find a way to just be able to give you some help um, remotely. Um, so feel free to still text her, but make sure you put on that text message USA so she knows you're not in Canada. And if you guys, even if you're a little far away, it's worth the drive to Scarborough to get that scan done. It really is worth the time. And um, even if you can only make it out once, if she has to go over the results with you over the phone, but it would be really great if you can just make that appointment with her, get the scan done. It will give you a nice, good bird's eye view of what is going on in my body. And from there, she can help you build a program. I can help you bring, build a nutrition plan to help reverse it. Because most of these issues, honestly, unless you were born with it, and even then we can help you, um, then uh, you can you can be able to uh, you know really start to heal the body. Um, yeah. So yes, this will be awesome. on our YouTube channel and possibly on Dr. Higgins' YouTube channel. But you have to subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified that it is there. Ah, Jacinta, you're in Florida. I keep forgetting. I'm so sorry. Look how I just moved you up and moved I you. I got to hail her up, Jacinta. I'm from Florida. <laughs> I grew up in Florida. What part? Text me what part of Florida. And just so you know, we manage people all around the US, uh, England, just similar, just like you do, Carolyn. So uh, yeah, get in touch. I mean, there's all kinds of things once we uh, dive deep into a history and what's really going on. Um, you know, if, with your help, one of the things that Carolyn and I both do is we really look to seek the issue behind the issue. So root cause medicine, what's really going on, right? Um, so obviously, you know, whether you, there's a, there's a, like a pill for every ill we don't roll like that we really look into what's really going on behind the scenes and how we can really correct um, the cause not mask the symptoms but um uh, you're on palm coast okay i grew up in palm beach gardens florida so awesome a flow of floridian <laughs> awesome well, i've been to florida a number of times but i haven't lived there mm -hmm. yeah we'll excuse you <laughs> Excellent. So folks, thanks again. We are going to have, boy, that was like, that was like short and intense. There was lots of really good information. So look out for part two, tell your friends. We want a full house here because we want all this information to be shared and for people to realize that it's not difficult. And next week I'll talk uh, too about what a day of eating looks like. And I know some of you are already familiar with that, but I'll go into a little bit more detail of what does your day look like? And if you show up next week, I will also offer you a special, a detox, a special off, a discount off of the detoxes. So be here next week and it will be for everybody. Only you guys will get the code. So look forward to having you. Thank right. you again, Dr. Higgins. And we'll see you all 7.30 next week. God bless and you guys. Have a wonderful week. If you're week. interested in the body scan, because these questions are coming in, uh, I put the number in the I put the number in there, and Dr. Higgins put the number in there. So just look up through the chat. I'll leave the uh, the thing open for a while. I'll leave the the webinar open for a while, but uh, just look up through the chat. The phone number is there, and send a text message. And all you need to do is give your first name and your last name, and say the word scan and somebody will be in touch with you to get that booked for you. So thank you again, and everybody have a really great night. God bless you all. Take care. Bye.